And topic for today is top ten favorite box art. Now, box art did nothing to actually help the model. And there's many times the box art is drastically better than the model kit that's actually within. And there's times I've actually almost bought the kit for the box and tossed the kit into the bin and kept the box art to make as a poster. Because some box art was spectacular. And as a kid, especially as a kid, back then the box arts were not sanitized a couple of mine that I've chosen for today have actually been re-released with certain parts of it airbrushed out. A couple I actually looked at that I didn't choose, but I looked at, and they had angles that were really reminiscent of images from the Commando comics. And that's what pulled you in. It was the action and adventure and the, the, the whole excitement of what it might have been to have been a fighter pilot or a tank commander or and not the realism of what war actually was it was that romanticism of it my number 10 and this was actually harder than i thought because everything that's in my top 10 i really like but i felt i had to start at the bottom and i went with the matchbox 172 messerschmitt bf 110 the reason it's number 10 is it is spectacularly painted. The 110 is a winter camo. It's armed with bombs and fuel tanks. Low coming in over the Russian winter. Fantastically painted with weathering. But it doesn't have much action going on. It's just a really cool picture. It has some speed blur applied so you can tell that this aircraft is moving really quickly really low it's just a really good shot and it's the wasp those wasps were amazing like stencils that they had on the front of these these 110s and it just that that was one that I always wanted my dad built me this kit when I was a kid so this is one I'm actually also trying to get my my little hands on to F4 MK RAF I always liked British Phantoms. Uh, I think that it's... The Phantom itself is just a big, massively beefy, kick-ass kind of plane to start with, regardless of which service it's, it's flying with. But the RAF ones just had beautiful colours. The camo, the round rules, they always had from memory some nose art, which is something a lot of British planes didn't have, but I always remember Phantoms having them. And this this cover has the one of them in a dive, launching the fixed fin rockets, and you got the f- flame and the the rockets pouring out of it, while the second one is flashing by and starting its tight turn. And it's just full of drama and just showing off both of the aircraft from slightly different angles. So you're seeing it. F- which I like from because of that. You can see, if you're a kid, you know you're looking at this thing. You're seeing sort of the side view and then a sort of angled view. It's just such a good box, and that's another one my dad built me, which I'm trying to get my grubby protuberances on. There's no action in this picture at all. There's no drama. It's all very relaxed and calm. The mission is for tonight. They're getting it bombed up, but. Everything about this is just beautiful, except for the Sterling. The Sterling, I love them, but God, they are ugly aircraft. A throwback definitely to a Between the Wars sort of design, but I love them. And I wish that they would get a new tool, because Sterlings are just... They were so important in the early part of the war, and they never got the love they deserved. But this, I think what really drew me to this particular image wasn't just the composition which is really he's done and yeah this would be a Roy Cross as well I assume he's done such an amazing like the angles the ones parked in the background but the angle of the plane the position of it like where he's put the, the point of view that is unusual to begin with and it's really cool it's like from ground level, looking at it as if you were one of the crew sort of thing. It's really clever, that. 
but I think it's the colours. More than anything, I think what really makes this one stand out for me and pulled me in was the colours. It's really vibrant. A lot of the box arts are really strong, but they're not always vibrant. But the greens in this are really vivid. The blue is a solid blue sky. The aircraft colour, it's not just one solid colour. Like, they've got the black, which they have for the the night camo, but it's still multicoloured with shading and where he's put light sources and just really just strong colours, and it just really stands out. It's really eye-catching. Wellington Mark 10. And this one is full of drama and action and really tragedy. It's, it's In a way, it's one of those rare... They didn't, even for, for the day, they did a lot of action ones, but they didn't do many like this one. The Wellington is on its bombing, bombing run. The other ones in the flight are, are dropping. And it's been hit. 100% full on in the tail section by anti aircraft. It's torn the fuselage, it's ripped the skin, it's set fire to the plane, it's absolutely killed the rear gunner. Not a nice picture compared to some of the others, but in a way. It was very. It's a very telling picture, and in a way, it's a very important picture because that was the thing when so many of that romanticized view of what the whole thing was about, especially for the kids. I mean, it's always a balancing act. You don't want the kids to be romanticized by war, but you don't want to traumatize them too early with what it all, what it really is. So there's this balance where you try to get them to understand it's not all fun and games and it's not Call of Duty and Battlefield 1 and all this. But you, you do want to encourage them, I think, to build and to learn and model kits are an amazing way to do that. Uh, it was also one of the few covers that I think were really designed around a specific actual event, which this one was, and they uh, printed on the actual front that it was... Um, and it's got it there. And I did actually remember that it did this. Because so most of them, they're real planes, but they don't really do it in exactly an actual event. But he got the um, CG, the uh, CGM medal for courage and flying skill because he brought the aircraft back. And um, Squadron... Oh, no, Sergeant L.F. Williamson. So... I always like this for the drama, but also for its actual realistic depiction of what was Phantom. going on. FG1. There is absolutely no drama at all in this picture. This is just a Royal Navy Phantom at really low level, Beetling around, the angle of the plane is just gorgeous. He's got his afterburners on. It's just the blue of the ocean, the blue of the plane. And it's interesting, they've had to tone the blue of the sky down because everything else is blue. The way they've done that sort of misty sort of sky. And I, I don't know. The thing is, I've always found this a little funny. And it's funny because I'm strange. And I say that because when I first saw this... The first thing that came into my head was that... Uh, hello, XT-864. We have a radar contact. Can you please check it out? Roger, it's an oil rig. The way they've put this together, the colours and just the angle and everything, I, as a composition piece, I just really like it. If this was a poster on my wall, I'd actually be... I'd be happy. JU-52 Transport. This one's been re-released without the fire. They sterilized it because they felt that... The, and you know who's to blame for this crap? Australians. Australia, well, not Australia as the country, Australia as the government, had put forward this idea that they wanted to uh, make things less warlike. And an actual motion had been passed... And I don't know if it was put forward as a request or an actual law. It was a fair while ago. 
and it was to do with uh, war depictions on uh, I don't know if it was toys in general or if it was specifically aimed at model kits and part of that uh, led to some of the companies doing aircraft just flying in the clouds which isn't always bad I mean that Fujimi pick there's nothing going on it's fantastic but we got box art today it's just starting to come back we're starting to get some airfix is starting to throw off those shackles and actually doing some cool stuff again but you go back a little bit and they did very boring box art what the hell people and this had been re-released without the flame and what drew me to this picture was the colors are great definitely the green on the brown is really striking but it's that drama of the 52 on the far side banking away its engine on fire they're still trying to pile out of the plane you know this thing's gonna it's, it's banking because it's starting to lose control you've got the gunner on the close one who's turned looking at it you, you it's that high drama you've got the other ones parachuting down this was a quicker painting, I think, than the Sterling. Because if you look at the Sterling, the detail in every area is phenomenal. This one is much more abstract. But it's still composed piece that tells a story. And that's the big thing. These old ones tell a story. The new ones what do you know don't tell any fortress. This picture is pretty close to the Sterling in quality. It's like one of those ones... I don't know if it was a time thing. I don't know like if the, if Roy Cross had more time for certain pictures than others and that the, what those ones he had more time for are far more detailed. Or if it was just some he felt like the JU-52 and the Hellcat that could be done in a more abstract way and still tell exactly the story it needed to and did it that way. But... I re this is the first box art that I remember. That I can physically go. The very first one I really remember is this one. So much going on. You've got those guns hammering at that Japanese fighter. You've got the f ones at the back cutting through the formation. But that one fighter that is just putting himself... He's pressing that attack so hard and so close. And he set fire to that B-29... You've got the flames at the back. You've got the bombs all tumbling out. You've got the multiple fires, multiple layers of B-29s going back. You've got contrails all through, the, which is another group on the left and in the center and on the right. It's just so much going on. It's like you could, This is a picture you could spend 20 minutes just sitting there admiring and looking at all the different things and just keep finding new bits that he's put in there. Short Sunderland. This pick is so busy. There's so much stuff going on in this pick. You've got... The, there's no sky. It's looking on a diagonal angle with the plane and looking down at the sea. You've got splashes and ships on fire. You've got the Condor. And then you've got the Sunderland, which has just refused to let it go. And they've just gone down and they've decided to have a big Donny Brook and mix it up. And one of the engines is on fire on the Condor. And they're just really sticking it to them. And the detail, there's a lot of detail. That was the other thing. This is another one of those pictures where it's like they've spent that extra time. Because it's really, it's not an abstract picture. It's like really detailed. And there's, there's so much going on and so much you can look at and find and... This is another one I wish they'd release as a great big poster. I, I remember this one. This is another one my dad built. And I, I always remembered this. This one I actually had the box cut out and had on my wall. The fire, which mixed up into the smoke. The green camo of the Heinkel. It's right up close. It's so big, it actually goes off the edge of the box. You don't get the whole plane on the box it's you it's right up close to you it's more abstract than some of the others but it's all about the story it's another one of those it's all about the story you've got the heinkels 
behind it, going back into the distance, there's some flak. All the sky is sort of a murky, partly darkness, but also smoke and just... It's just one of those things. They're just all... And, and the one pulling up so you can see the underside, there's definitely the an idea of showing off the, the plane in, in a couple of different like angles to try to let you be able to see it. It's just... This upright captured it in its dive. It's got all the action going on with the hurricanes coming in, the flaming Stuka with its two crew have bailed out, the other Stuka that's banking around on the curve to follow this one down... The detail on the actual Stuka, it's another one of those ones that it's not abstract, it is really detailed. There's so much going on in that picture. I, I just, for me, this is completely iconic for what Airfix was doing when I was a kid. I'm not keen on 124, I think it's a huge scale. I'm not sure where I'd put any of them, but I desperately want a 124 Stuka. I'm not even sure of the scale of the thing. It is, this is for me a Commando comic picture in every way. You've got, Commando comics loved doing dead straight on profiles in attack runs. The Spitfire is in that dead straight on profile. The 109 is banking, it's on fire and the pilot is leaving the office. It's got riddled, he has absolutely riddled this thing. And it's a spectacular action shot. You've got the other 109 that's trying to bank in. You've got the other Spitfires at the back that are coming in. Just as an action shot goes, I just was really drawn to this. 172, Dornier 17. It's really close to have been in my top 10. But I think that... The Dornier itself is great. The Spitfire rolling in is really cool. They've got all the crisscross of the dogfight contrails above. It's a really amazing pick. It just there seems one little thing, and I don't know what it is, but it just feels like there's one thing missing to elevate it from good to great. Dogfight pack, MiG-15, and Mirage. I've had a thing for Israeli birds. Uh, they just have a lot of camos, is what they do. Now, this one has no camo. It's just bare metal. But uh, it's just such a dramatic image. I'm not sure how accurate it is. I mean, there's, he can almost reach outside and touch the ground. That's pretty low to be doing a rocket attack. But from the just a composition point of view, it looks... So cool. You've got one of the MiGs on fire. Oh, it's probably not, might not be MiG-15s. They're probably MiG-17s. Not sure. Have to check. But it'd be... It's around there. The Not the 19. But you've got one taken off in the background. It's just got off the ground. You've got another one doing a, a, a another rocket attack further over. You've got the afterburner full on. You've got the flames from the rockets. You've got the explosions. You've got the guys taking cover. There's so much going on in this pick. I was saving my money for this when I was a kid. Because you get a Hurricane and you get a 110. It's like, how could you do wrong? And they sold it before I saved up enough. So I bought something else. Another kit. I can't remember what it was, but another Airfix. This is just really cool. You've got some surface detail... You've got one going down in flames. You've got hurricanes rolling in, the clouds. This other one, he's had a go. Doesn't look like he's damaged it, but he's like he's done a run because they're like right up to each other. A little bit too busy, in a way. And the hurricane that's rolled in, he kind of looks like he's actually shooting at his mate. It's going to be a near miss either way. So I think that it might have been better not to have had the second group of Hurricanes just from a composition or have them on the far side or something. But 
that's sort of why I didn't make my cut. As uh, the rest of it, I think is great. So that's why it didn't make my actual ten. BF one hundred nine E one almost made my cut. And if the Airfix and Matchbox hadn't been quite as good as they were, this would have. Now, I know that that's, a, that's sort of a moot point in a way. So, well, if, if the stuff was actually worse than it was, then this one... Yeah, okay. It, it's not the most con concise argument for why it didn't make the list. But the thing I like about this is... It, it, when I first saw this, when this was coming out, and they've discontinued it now, which is annoying because I actually want this kit bad. They said it was coming out and they posted this picture. First thought was, that's a 109 looking like I think a 109 should. It looks like a shark. It feels like a shark and it's hunting. And it's found a Blenheim by itself possibly on the way back from a raid he's climbing he's stalking and impending doom is coming a lot of story in a clear blue sky and only two planes and I, that's I think one thing I really appreciate about this actual composition is there's a story going on without a lot of the other stuff now Roy was amazing at giving you multiple stories because if you, as you start studying his paintings his, his big full on ones you start seeing multiple people's stories going on this is much more centred on only the two aircraft but it's really good the colours because the 109 has that sky blue that it has so they've made the blue of the sky even bluer so you've got the contrast the clouds look great but just that whole it's hunting I just really loved this pick. I wanted it as a poster. I want the damn kit. I, I just... This one, I really like.